When it comes to propulsion, sail is of course the best thing we can do. Uh, water jet is also an option and a water jet is basically a water uh, that's pumped uh, from the ocean and then through a nozzle at the stern of the vessel to, to push the, the vessel forward. Uh, a water jet has a low um, efficiency but very good maneuvering capabilities. Uh, it's used a lot on high speed craft. Uh, one of the advantages is that you have very few movable parts outside the hull. Oars, also very handy to have when you need them, but only relevant on smaller vessels. Because most ships, uh, their propulsion is through with the help of a propeller. And the function of a propeller is to transfer the mechanical energy from the engine uh, to create push by rotating in the water uh, and pushing on the pushing the ship forward through the water. The net pushing force that the propeller creates um, in the vessel's um, direction of uh, propulsion is equal to the resistance that the water makes on the water on the ship's hull as uh, the vessel moves uh, through the water. So if you're moving at the constant 10 knots of speed, uh, the push from the engine is the same as the resistance from the water on the hull. Now, uh, the, pr the propeller has to be, um, you have to put a lot more effect into the propeller than uh, the, uh, the resistance from the water because only a part of the mechanical energy from the engine uh, is uh, uh, transmitted into pushing energy in the water. There's uh, some energy lost by uh, uh, putting the water into rotation. It, it doesn't create uh, pushing force. It creates turbulence, bubble, spins the water in all kinds of di direction. Some energy is lost in the gear transmission and the powertrain. And the total um, efficiency of a normal propeller system on a vessel is in the range between 50 and 60% which means that the propeller has to be, uh, you have to have an engine that is pretty much twice the size uh, of the necessary push uh, that you need in order to achieve uh, the desired speed. Uh, the bigger a propeller is and the slower it rotates, uh, the better efficiency it has. And this is exemplified on the vessel here, Emma Mashk, which uh, a few years ago was the, the world's biggest container ship. Uh, the, now you have some that are quite a bit bigger. But it's a huge propeller and it rotates very slowly. You have um, one shaft that goes from the main engine and directly onto the propeller. Uh, and the engine rotates with approximately 75 um, revolutions per minute. Uh, so you have a hundred thousand plus horsepower on one shaft, which uh, gives this huge vessel a speed of 22 to 27 knots, uh, very, very efficiently. On smaller vessels that you can run with a D5, um, the especially on fishing vessel, the propeller uh, is typically has two to four um, propeller blades uh, that are connected to uh, a boss which is then uh, connected to the end of the prop shaft. Um, and the pushing force from the propeller um, is there when the pr because there's suction at the front of the propeller blades and um, overpressure on the backside. Oh, so it's, it's the same as a wing, uh, the wing of an airplane. Uh, we have two different types of propellers. One is a, a fixed pitch propeller uh, where the propeller blades angle with the rotational plane is fixed. The other one is a variable pitch propeller where the blades of the propeller, uh, their pitch can be adjusted to whatever angle you desire. Uh, and on most fishing vessels, uh, a variable pitch propeller is normal. Uh, one of the main advantages of variable pitch propellers is that you can um, you can adjust the effect and direction of sh pushing uh, by adjusting the pitch of the propellers. You have a very uh, quick uh, you can very quickly adjust if you're going ahead or astern. Um, 
the disadvantage of variable pitch is that uh, the, the efficiency is a little bit lower than in a fixed pitch propeller. The um, shape of the aft ship, uh, the, the part of the hull that's submerged in the water aft, is very important because it has a large effect on um, the resistance uh, um, of the hull going through the water and it also has a lot uh, of impact on uh, the working conditions for the propeller. Uh, it also has a lot of say to say for the, the um, uh, space that you have on deck. Uh, newer vessels today, they uh, typically keep their full width on deck all the way to the stern. Whereas older vessels became narrower uh, as you move towards the stern. Um, to have as low water resistance as possible, it's important that um, the water can flow freely to the propeller and that the stern doesn't create um, more waves than necessary and bury itself in the water. It's also important to have the propeller as deep into the water as possible. The front of the vessel uh, is the part of the vessel that cuts through the waves and is very uh, important for how the ship behaves uh, at sea. Uh, one of the functions of the bow is to lift the front part of the vessel to avoid uh, waves crashing in over deck and creating damage. Having a bulbous bow as we see here is very common uh, and it's supposed to reduce the water resistance of the hull uh, going through the water. Uh, the shape of the hull depends on the vessel's speed, the draft, the kind of waters you're supposed to sail in, and a lot more. For steering and maneuvering a vessel, uh, most ships use rudder. And the function of the rudder is to uh, change the water flow from the propeller and to, to uh, direct it in, a, in another direction to make the ship uh, change its heading. The traditional type of rudder is what we call a balanced rudder, uh, especially co common on older and smaller ships. A balanced rudder means that the part of the rudder blade is in front of the vertical rudder shaft. Uh, so this is an example of a, a traditional balanced rudder. A Becker rudder uh, has a sort of smaller add-on rudder behind the normal rudder. Uh, and when uh, r the rudder is turned, the small add-on rudder is uh, turned even more. It's called a high lift rudder and it gives very good um, uh, ra turning radius for vessels. Uh, the disadvantage is you have more moving parts, things that, that can stuck and cause problems. Uh, the last picture here is a duseror, which is a kind of, it's a bit of pipe really, that's stuck around the propeller and that rotates. Uh, and then in that way changes the direction uh, of the water flow. Pretty common on tugboats. Now a conventional rudder uh, it has a maximum angle of about 35 degrees. If you were to rotate the rudder more you would only have cavitation and turbulence and it would lose its effect. Whereas a high lift rudder such as a Becker rudder can have an effective rudder angle of upwards towards 80 degrees. And this has huge consequences for the maneuvering capabilities of the vessel. As we can see, the turning radius of a conventional rudder, well, it does turn around, but the radius is pretty big. With a high lift rudder, you will have a significantly smaller uh, turning circle, turning radius. So a high lift rudder, Becker rudder or other type, uh, means that you have significantly uh, better maneuvering capabilities. We're looking at side propellers, thrusters, uh, very common on vessels of all sizes. Smaller vessels also often have a bow propeller at the bow, uh, while some vessels also have a side, prope a side propeller aft. Most uh, propellers, uh, side propellers, are tunnel thrusters that go through the hull, as we see on the lower picture here. They can be hydraulically or electronically uh, powered. Azimuth thrusters, you have a lot of different types. They are propellers that uh, can be rotated 360 degrees and as such can, can push the water in any direction. 
uh, and azimuth thrusters can be used both for propul propulsion and for maneuvering. Um, an outboard engine, for instance, that's, a, that's an azimuth thruster. Propulsion uh, engines, uh, you have uh, all kinds of systems on vessels with one or more engines. You have uh, mechanical uh, propulsion, you can have electrical propulsion, you can have battery hybrid systems, you can have um, hydraulic pumps or generators hooked onto the main engines. There's a whole range of, of uh, different systems. On fishing vessels, the most common uh, so far is that you have a main engine uh, connected to uh, a shaft by a shaft to the propeller. Uh, normally it has a gear that reduces the um, rotation speed uh, from whatever the, the speed of the engine to a lower speed that the propeller rotates with. Um, the RPMs of the engine are often in the range 1500 to 2000 revolutions per minute, whereas a propeller should not go faster than at the maximum 500 uh, RPM. And as we've heard, the bigger and the slower uh, uh, a propeller is, uh, the, uh, the slower the RPM is, the better efficiency you have. So on, uh, on your vessel, you try to have as big a propeller as possible. Uh, also using a gear makes it possible to uh, put the motor shaft higher than the prop shaft which again makes it easier to place uh, the motor, the engine. You can have the engine higher up in the vessel and the prop shaft all the way down at the bottom. Bigger boats typically have uh, two or more engines that are either connected mechanically to the prop shaft uh, with a gear or you can have a, a hybrid diesel electric uh, powertrain uh, where you have uh, the diesel engines connected to generators that again uh, supply power to one or more electromotors that are connected to the props, uh, propellers. And you can also have battery systems uh, in, in that powertrain. With higher fuel uh, prices and um, stricter environmental regulations over the last few years, the focus has increased on having uh, power efficient propulsion systems uh, with as low consumption of fuel as possible. And this means that hybrid and electrical solutions are being uh, are getting more and more widespread. Um, and hybrid solutions, where you have battery uh, battery uh, packages and electrical propulsion, uh, makes it possible to have better um, conditions running with a, a constant load on the diesel engine and uh, a higher efficiency and a reduced uh, fuel consumption when you compare it to uh, a traditional diesel mechanical propulsion system. A parallel hybrid propulsion system we can see a, a figure of here where you have um, shore power which provides energy, electrical energy to the battery banks, in this case two battery store energy storage systems in battery banks. Um, and the battery storage is the battery banks can provide propulsion to uh, an electrical motor, uh, which, uh, if it's running as a motor, can be used for propulsion. You have a gear that's connected to both the electrical motor and the diesel engine. Uh, in addition, you also have a diesel tank, which is also an energy storage. Uh, and the diesel engine can be used for propulsion and also to charge the battery. So if you're running the diesel engine, you can use part of the energy that it provides through the gear to the prop for propulsion and the remainder of the energy to charge the battery using the electrical motor as a generator. This again means that the diesel engine can use at, uh, can be used at an optimal uh, load, which is fairly high, 70, 80, 90 percent load, uh, and make sure that you have a continuous high efficiency on the diesel engine. If you have a low energy vessel, you can uh, get energy from the battery energy storage. Uh, depending on your um, type of operation uh, and how much the necessary uh, the, the the energy requirement is, a hybrid propulsion system can uh, reduce your fuel consumption consumption 
uh, with uh, quite a, a significant pr percentage when you compare it to a traditional uh, fossil fuel only uh, drivetrain. Earlier it used to be very common to have hydraulic pumps and other equipment hooked onto the main engine. Uh, today on smaller vessels, most vessels instead have an auxiliary engine that produces electrical power. Um, the uh, disadvantage of having hydraulic pumps and other auxiliary equipment uh, connected to the main engine is that you need to have the main engine running if you want to run a hydraulic winch, which is very impractical if you're moored alongside. Um, this is the reason that you often use diesel electric or hydraulic um, uh, propulsion from for auxiliary systems, for instance for running uh, deck machinery, winches and cranes. The hydraulic pumps can be um, electrically powered uh, by electricity being produced from the shaft generator from the main engine or from an auxiliary engine uh, such as this on the picture or you can get the electrical energy from a battery storage. The most common building materials for fishing vessels are steel, aluminum and plastic or glass fiber. And uh, the size, the type of construction and the price uh, are factors that go into the decision on what to choose. Uh, and the strength and characteristic of a building material are um, uh, important when it comes to uh, deciding how big size vessel it can be used for. Uh, comparing we see a plastic or glass fiber typically used for uh, vessels in the range of 15 to 50 feet. Uh, plastic is very lightweight, it's fairly cheap, it's uh, easy to keep clean, it doesn't take much maintenance. Uh, disadvantages, it's not very strong um, and it burns really well. Wood, same size of vessels, it's pretty, it's strong, it's very traditional, but it's not uh, the building material of the future as things look now. It also takes a lot of maintenance to keep a wooden boat looking nice. Aluminum, sorry, aluminum is lightweight, it's easy to build, uh, it doesn't take much maintenance and it's fairly cheap. Disadvantage, it's not as strong as steel and it is um, prone or uh, for galvanic corrosion, which means if you have electrical problems on an aluminum hull, uh, it, uh, you, can also, you can easily have uh, co corrosion problems as well. Steel is the most common used for all sizes of vessels. It's cheap, it's strong, it's easy to repair, but it does take a bit of uh, maintenance and it is corrosion prone. Looking at a few pictures, here we have a fishing boat, a glass fiber hull that's molded in forms. This is a, a fishing boat that's going to be about 11 meters long. In a, the, and the, the hull is molded in a vacuum mold. It, which is a completely different building met, uh, method compared to uh, the next picture, which is uh, a, an aluminum hull, which is welded together by uh, plates that are bent into shape on a, on a framework uh, to keep it stiff. This is a, a boat that's being built for a, 